Hello students, Pascal here, and welcome to the sixth video of our Pymol for Beginners series. Today we'll be taking a look at mutagenesis. So let's go ahead and launch our Pymol. And we'll be looking at our familiar uh, protein. So we'll fetch one RGS. And let's take a look at this as a cartoon. So show space cartoon. And let's hide those lines. So hide space lines. And we'll change the color because I'm not a big fan of this color. So color space fire brick and fire brick is one word there. And let's take a look at one residue in particular. We'll take a look at residue 333. Three, three. So to see that residue, the side chain, we're going to show space sticks comma space resi space 333. Three, three. And we can see that it's shown up right here, but it is a little bit difficult to see because it's the same fire brick color. So let's change the color. So color, space. and let's color it slate, comma, space, resi, space, three, three, three. And now we can see it a little bit better here. So let's zoom in on this residue. And if you remember from our intro video, we can change this to have the side chain helper on that removes these extra atoms there and only shows the side chain. So to do that, we set space cartoon underscore side underscore chain underscore helper comma space on. And that gets rid of those atoms there. So we have a wizard to help us do the mutagenesis. So if we come up here to wizard and move down to mutagenesis, we end up with this window that opens up down here. So let's say we want to mutate this residue here to perhaps a tryptophan. So we're going to click on the residue and where it says no mutation, We'll click on that and we'll go down to tryptophan. So now we can see in white, it's showing how the tryptophan would look in that place. Now, for most of these, there'll be several rotomers for the possibilities for how that amino acid will fit in there. So if we look down here at the bottom, we can see it says one out of seven. So there are seven rotomers. And you can use the arrow keys on your keypad to move from one to the next. And you'll notice up here beside mutation, there's a percentage sign. That shows the chances of that rotomer being the one that's actually there. So if I move from one to the next, we can see that the percentage signs go down. And you can see these red discs that show up become bigger and redder and that indicates there's more clashing when that rotomer is selected. So as we move through it we can see all sorts of clashing that's happening here and the chances of that rotomer being the correct one goes down. So let's go all the way back to the first one which is the one with the uh, greatest potential for being correct. We can see there's some clashing but it's not as significant. So let's choose this one. Um, so we're going to uh, ignore these other um, uh, pieces of information here. They're fine as they are. So we'll apply this rotomer and we can see that this is what we end up with. Now that we have a rotomer, we'd like to take a look at maybe something a little bit more accurate about what might happen in this neighborhood. So now that we're done with the mutagenesis, we can go down to done, click on that, and this will be the one that's selected. Now we'd like to look at the neighborhood of this residue. So if we click on it and under selection, we can go from action down to modify and then expand and we'll choose five angstroms so this will be in the neighborhood of five angstroms from that residue and then now that this is selected again under selection we'll go action and then we'll go down to clean and as it's thinking, and there we can see there is some movement to improve the conditions around there that might be a little bit more likely to happen when that residue is there instead of the original. So that's what we do for mutagenesis. Hopefully this was helpful to you and hopefully you'll join us for our next video. Thanks, bye-bye now.